Well, it's time now for Tech 24 with Peter O'Brien. Hi, Peter. I'm Monty. So we're talking about online safety, in particular the UK's online safety bill, which made some significant steps this week. Yeah, that's right. But before we get into the detail, let's start with the story of Breck Bedner, who's a 14-year-old boy. Back in 2014, he was murdered by the 18-year-old Lewis Danes. Now, Danes met him and befriended him through online gaming. They'd never met in person before, uh, before Danes came to his flat and killed him. That was eight years ago, and although it's an extreme case, real-life harm has, of course, uh, of course, been due to our relationships online with each other and with the internet um, for years. Things like children accessing gambling or porn, bullying, ab abuse, content encouraging violence or eating disorders. Um, I think we all know the kind of risks there are. And we're only now starting to see legislation like the UK's online safety bill start to be passed, really aimed at protecting people online. Uh, Lauren Lefebvre, Breck Bedner's mother, says the online safety bill is a step in the right direction. When I was trying to get help for Breck, um, people didn't see the internet as a danger because it was just um, accepted that children accessed whatever they wanted and that's, oh, that's what they do. And I think people would have taken me more seriously if I could have you know, brought in the online harms bill into the conversation. Well, heartbreaking story. Uh, so what's new with the online safety bill uh, this week then? Well, the major news was that an amendment means that executives at tech firms could face prison in the UK for up to two years if they fail to protect children online. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. A lot of things have been made criminal in this bill. It's now passed the House of Commons and is in the House of Lords. These include uh, cyber flashing, which is sending obscene content to strangers online. Often this is done by AirDrop, the uh, Apple app. Uh, deep fakes, which superimpose people's faces onto pornography and down blousing, it's pretty obvious what that is, taking photos down a woman's top. So what's not in the law then? Well, a previous version wanted to address con content which is uh, which is legal but harmful. So things like disinformation, racism, misogyny. In the end, this was taken out after lobbying from free speech advocates. But platforms are now required to remove content if it infringes their terms of service. How has the bill been received? One uh, foundation that's not very happy is the Wikimedia Foundation, which, of course, um, looks after Wikipedia. Rebecca Mac um, McKinnon, vice president for global advocacy, told the BBC that the threat of harsh new penalties that the online safety bill brings will not affect just big corporations, but also volunteer led sites like Wikipedia. And there are also concerns about increased age ver verification that the bill would require. Some experts say the internet simply isn't built for such uh, mass uh, age verification in a way which is um, secure. One major advocate for child rights online is Biban Kidron, film director who's uh, turned activist through her organization Five Rights. I asked her what she thought of these criticisms of the bill. I personally, and I think colleagues in general, will be very protective of Wikipedia and make sure it's not somehow uh, an unintended consequence. I think on the age assurance uh, piece, I think that there is no necessity uh, to create huge data uh, data um, collection around age assurance. And I think that people who are pretending that age assurance doesn't already happen are absolutely wrong. All the big companies are, are using some measure of age assurance and they are keeping that information. And I think what we need the bill to do is to actually set out rules of the road and say they've got to do that in ways that, that are, are private, secure, inclusive, and actually for the child's benefit, rather than actually identifying it's a child so that you can target it. So I think there's a lot of uh, misinformation and, and, and sort of, you know, sleight of hand on the question of age assurance. Uh, and it's an area that we'll be looking at. When we talk about online safety, what's happening beyond the UK? Well, the UK's Education Secretary said this week that they were the first country in the world to legislate in this area. But of course, last year, the EU's Digital Services Act came into effect. And within weeks, online platforms are going to have to start the first step to comply. Actions being taken in the US on both the state and the federal level. And there's gathering political interest in online safety in many other countries as well. So it looks like the tech companies running these platforms are going to have a headache to work out how to comply 
apply in all of these different jurisdictions. Previously, they'd been used to just developing a tool and pushing it out worldwide without much oversight. So let their headaches continue. No kidding. Okay, Peter, thanks so much.